Kanji was a lonely kid who suffered a life-changing tragedy when his sister died of cancer. One day he dies of exhaustion before getting transported to another world in the body of a young boy and unlocks his SS rank magic abilities. Our story starts when Kanji's sister dies of cancer and he vows to find a cure to this deadly disease and starts working towards being a scientist. After 40 years of hard work, he becomes a well-known pharmacist, but due to getting overworked, he ends up taking a nap but gets transported into another world. He opens his eyes to find himself in a completely different world and notices a girl named Lot in front of him. She tells him that he had been struck by lightning a few weeks ago and was in a coma ever since. He suddenly realizes that he must have died in his sleep and has been ishikade into an alternate world. He tells Lot honestly that he can't remember anything about himself or his past, so she brings a mirror for him. He looks in the mirror and sees that he is now in a different body, a boy named Pharma, with a lightning-shaped mark on his arm. Lot tells him that the mark was the sign of the god of medicine, but Pharma doesn't have any idea about what she is talking about and ignores her. She explains that their family had been royal pharmacists for generations and were nearly as important as the king before taking him to the hall and showing him pictures of his parents. She also reveals that his family is insanely skilled in magic as well, which gets Pharma excited and he asks if he could do magic as well. This shocks her to the core as she asks him whether he doesn't remember anything about magic. He shakes his head and she tells him that the main trait of being a noble is the ability to perform magic and without it, people will consider him a lowborn. She explains that he used to be a water magic user and was very good at it, before telling him to try and remember how to do magic. He goes back to his room and sits on the bed, thinking how he can even begin practicing, but thinks about the chemical composition of water, and after thinking about the molecular structure, suddenly, he feels something moving and water starts forming from his hands. He quickly rushes to the window and ends up blasting a lot of water in the garden while trying to stop. He is finally able to stop the flow and is exhausted by the end of it. Lot who was in the garden gets excited to see that he remembers to use magic and rushes upstairs. By that time, he tries to think about different molecular compositions and finds out that he can create complex compound things if he knows about their molecular structure. She comes upstairs and asks him whether he also forgot all the medicinal knowledge that he had and takes him into a library. The library was huge with a vast collection of books and she tells him that he had read all of them alongside remembering them word for word. He picks up a book and even though he had never seen it before, he realizes that everything inside the book is already in his mind as some of the boy's memories are still with him. After that afternoon, he goes to dinner where his family looks concerned for his well-being apart from a serious-looking man who turns out to be his father. His dad was happy that he was feeling better but relentlessly started asking him medical questions to check whether his memory is intact or not. His mom tries to tell his dad to chill out but Pharma tells her that it's okay and answers correctly. His father seems to get satisfied by his answers and tells him that he should restart his magic training from tomorrow itself, and Pharma agrees immediately. The next day, he goes down and meets his teacher, whose name is Elin. She seems suspicious of him and claims that he doesn't look like the farmer she knew. She is aware about the fact that his memory is fuzzy and tells him that she is his father's top student and his tutor from now on. After that, she asks him whether he remembers magic, to which he replies that he doesn't. She tells him that they are going to have a revision class today and explains to him the classic stuff about how there are a couple of elements including fire, water, air, and earth and you can make a bunch of new shit with it. She takes him to the banks and asks him whether he brought his wand. He asks whether she is talking about the one in his pants but she says that she doesn't like the below average wands as she is a size queen. After taking the massive L, he suddenly remembers that he saw a wand inside of his room on the wall but thought it was a decorative piece. She sighs and produces her own wand, which is pretty huge and makes me think that she is from Thailand, but let's not assume anything. She hands her huge wand into his hands and tells him to use it to produce basic water fountain magic. He seems to be confused and says that he doesn't remember how to do it, so she takes the wand out of his hands and goes over to the bank, telling him to look closely, as she is about to demonstrate it once. She simply goes ahead and creates a fountain from her staff, which he is impressed by. He will be very impressed by me as I create a bunch of waterless fountains with my staff at night. She then walks to him and hands the staff over to him, telling him to replicate without even explaining what or how she did it. Anyways, Pharma is a jigga chat and goes over near the bank and ends up producing a fountain big enough to rival my nightly fountains, which shocks her to the core, as she falls over. She rushes over to him checking whether he is okay, and tells him that each person has a set amount of mana that they can use and she is scared that he ended up using all of his. She rushes back to get a smaller staff out of her bag and tells him to grip it tightly. He seems to be very experienced in gripping wands, and it turns out that it was some sort of a meter to measure mana, and the wand ends up breaking, which totally shocks her. 
She tells him that this has never happened in their world before and pulls his sleeve up to see the tattoo that God ended up making on his arm and is again surprised to see it glowing. Pharma brushes it off, but she tells him that this is not some random mark, this is the God of Medicine's gang sign. She tells him that he is to never grab a man measuring one in front of anyone, not even his own father, and they end up stopping the lessons for the day. On their way back, they end up sitting on a bench, and while playing around, he realizes that he is able to see if anyone has any medical problem, if he focuses. He notices that Ellen's finger is looking blue when he focuses, and she reveals that he is right, as she ended up hurting it this morning. But this ends up freaking her out even more as she stumbles back saying that it is fame to be the ability possessed by the god of medicine as well and tells him not to kill her before running away into the bushes. What a crazy thought. The next day he wakes up and his father calls him to let him know that Ellen has a high fever and has declared that she doesn't think she'll be able to tutor him anymore, which is very weird. He also gives him a bunch of medicines and a short note telling him to deliver it to her and give his regards. He goes to Ellen's mansion, which is incredibly large as well and waits in a room, recalling how scared she was yesterday. Suddenly, the main door to the hall opens, and a terrified-looking Ellen emerges wearing full-body armor. She asks him not to kill her and stands by the door while he tries to calm her down and shows that he doesn't even have his wand, putting her somewhat at ease. She removes her face mask but still remains cautious and asks him why he's here, while he explains that his father sent him to deliver medicine for her. She comes inside but gets worried again, thinking that Pharma might have poisoned the medicine. He reassures her that he hasn't done anything of that sort. He then hands her some of the medicine he created with his modern knowledge of science and an ointment to apply, which also concerns her. However, he assures her that he has no intentions of harming her, and he still wants her to be his tutor. She says that he doesn't even need to learn because he is the reincarnation of the god of medicine himself. But he insists that he wants her to be his teacher. She bows down and says that if that's what god wishes, she will follow. He honestly admits that he has no idea about magic in this world, and he doesn't think he's a god. He asks for her help because the entire library contains no material on magic, it's filled with medicinal books. He tells her he wants to learn how to harness and control his newfound magical abilities, and she agrees to teach him. Before leaving, he hands her a bunch of pretty-looking flowers and says that if she doesn't become his tutor, he will take the flowers back. The next day, while wandering in the garden, he's approached by Ellen, who is again clad in armor, but appears more relaxed. She tells him that his magic is too strong and she needs to take precautions until she's sure he can handle it safely. She thanks him for his medication and mentions that even his dad's medications never worked this fast. His medicine seems more like a miracle. She also tells him that she has decided to tutor him and explains that they are going to an abandoned island because if anything goes wrong, it won't harm anyone. On the island, they spend the entire day training, learning new magic spells and mixing different elements. She tells him that he's learning surprisingly quickly and should master these spells in no time before returning to the mainland. After that, he sits on the staircase, watching his servants like a total creep but taking notes. He keeps using his magic eye ability, noting down all the ailments of his servants and what this ability can and cannot do. Finally, after looking at every servant, he looks at Lot and discovers that she also has problems with dry skin on her hands developing scabs. He goes to his room and creates medicine for Lot's hands using his modern knowledge of medical science. He creates a range of modern compounds to make excellent modern medicine. Then he gives it to Lot, telling her that this medicine should heal her hands. She is overjoyed and asks if she can share it with the other servants and her mom. He tells her not to worry as he has created various medicines after looking at people's symptoms. He goes with her to give them to each servant, and they're all overjoyed. Lot explains that none of them has ever received medicine from a noble before because there's a big divide between nobles and peasants. Nobles often don't treat peasants, and even if they did, the fee would be too high. This realization saddens him, and he pledges to make medicine accessible to common people as well. The next day, his father calls him in the morning, and he goes to the dining area to find his parents looking gloomy. They explain that his sister Blan has contracted chicken pox, and no one is allowed to go inside her room for three weeks. Some servants are exceptions, as this happened four years ago when Pharma had chicken pox. After understanding the situation, he returns to his room. He starts thinking about the chemical composition of the drugs he needs to make. He's not sure if he can create such a complex medicine. However, after countless attempts, he succeeds. He sneaks into his sister's bedroom, even though he's not supposed to be there. Blan is surprised by how quickly she got cured. The next day, he goes to his sister's room as his father inspects her, impressed by her swift recovery. In the evening, he works on developing a simple microscope. His father calls him and tells him he's been called to the royal capital for a visit. He seems to be really worried and starts coughing himself while trying to cover it up. 
Pharma suspects that his dad has some kind of lung problems as well, but hopes that his father has enough medicinal knowledge to treat on his own. His father tells him that this royal summon is directly from the queen, and that he cannot disclose the details to him yet, but he wants him to be there as his assistant, so he can learn how to deal with these problems and learn about the other nobles. They both take a carriage and after a while, reach the royal capital, which seems to be bustling with people. They go directly inside the palace, where they meet up with a long-haired guy who greets them both and takes them inside a huge chamber, filled with people who look worried. His dad asks what's the current condition of the queen, to which the ponytail guy responds negatively, but claiming that her condition seems to be beyond medicine. They go near the queen's bed, and bow down, after which the queen reveals herself, looking like she already has one of her legs in the coffin. His dad goes over to the queen and starts taking her pulse before asking Pharma to bring over his bag after which he takes her blood sample and performs some magical examinations. After that, they move over to the window, where they start looking at the queen's horoscope to decide whether she's going to live or die. Wow, what an amazing doctor. They check the stars, shake their heads as they realize that the stars aren't aligning and talk amongst themselves about how there is no way to save the queen and that she's going to die by tomorrow. His father goes over to the queen again and asks him to follow with some of the chemical from his bag, and Pharma realizes that he is trying to get the queen high on crack so she can be happy one last time before she dies. The queen straightforwardly asks him whether she is going to live, and he replies that the medicine is really strong and it should work as he starts letting the queen take a fat rip from the ancient bong. Pharma turns around as he starts hearing the court people begin to discuss how they are going to perform the funeral, and he realizes that this is just a big ritual for euthanasia, and his father is just trying to ease the queen's way to death. Pharma feels bad and starts thinking that he should do something and uses his special ability to check what exactly is causing the queen problems, and is able to find out that the problem is in her lungs, and it could be either cancer or tuberculosis. After careful consideration of her symptoms, he is able to narrow it down to AIDS and realizes that in this time period, this disease was incurable, but with future medicine, he can cure the disease. Suddenly, the door opens and a little shit runs into the room crying and goes to the queen, telling her that he doesn't want her to die, and asking her never to leave him. She looks extremely sad, and that is when Pharma decides that he can't let her die. He moves forward, bowing in front of her, and asks for her permission to treat her ailment with a new medicine that he developed. All the court people immediately gasp at this, as his own father walks by his side and asks him about this nonsense. Farm still claims that he can treat the queen to which his dad scolds him not to speak if he doesn't know what he is dealing with, but the queen stops him, telling him that she will let Pharma try what he wants because he is the only one who is not trying to get her high. He thanks her and rushes out of the court and closes himself inside of a room and jams the door with his ice magic. He starts getting his stuff out of his bag when his father arrives and starts banging on the door, ordering him to open it this very instant, but he tries to concentrate and begins thinking about the compound that he will need to create the medicine. This would be a very complicated one, so he draws the chemical nature of the compound before imagining it and synthesizing it. Before he can do that, however, his father breaks through the door with his own magic and tells him to stop this foolishness. He tells Pharma that the disease is incurable, and he is just going to create more problems and pain for the queen. Pharma replies that the disease is not incurable, and that his father is just dumb, as he believes in astrology, just like any other dumb girl that I know of. He then turns around and starts synthesizing his medicine, but his father gets offended by his dislike for astrology, just like any other dumb girl, and tells him that this is actual science as well, before shooting an ice blast at him. Pharma turns around and by that time, his father already has his wand raised, just like me every morning, and tells him to answer what kind of miracle medicine he is talking about, as without the knowledge that medicine is just poison. Pharma tells his dad to put away his erect wand, but just like my creepy uncle, he refuses and shoots more ice blasts at him. Pharma turns around and quickly uses a magic barrier to block the attack, which shocks his father to the core before erecting a giant ice wall in front of him. His father is shell-shocked as no one can use magic without a wand or without using incantations, and he asks Pharma who he really is as he is not his son. Pharma has no idea how to explain to his boomer father the concept of his case, but his father ends up finding his diary which is filled with Kama Sutra texts. He asks Pharma where he got this knowledge, and he replies that when he was in a coma, he had a dream and suddenly he knew everything about medicine and Kama Sutra. His father asks whether it was a revelation from the medicine god, but Pharma honestly replies that he has no idea. His father tells him that if he really got revelation from the god himself, then there is nothing he can do and he puts his wand back into his sheath, unlike my creepy uncle. Pharma also shows some respect and evaporates the entire wall, shocking his dad once again as he thought Pharma's element was water. 
He starts synthesizing the medicine again and once completed, he takes it into the court again while wearing a face mask. He walks up to the queen and tells her that he has completed the medicine, that the ailment she is suffering with is known as AIDS, which is caused by the queen being a freaky animal, and the treatment will be long-term, as she will have to take the medicine every day for at least half a year. Before giving her the medicine, however, he walks over and shows her the bacteria in her blood through high makeshift microscope and explains the entire concept of bacteria and other pathogens to her. He then drinks one of the goblets to show that he isn't trying to poison her, and the queen drinks the oath goblet herself. All of the nobles gather around to have a look at the microscope and are amazed by the things they see, asking him what kind of magic this is. He then returns back to his mansion with his father and gives a bottle of booze and some crack to him as well, and tells him to have fun with the Kama Sutra. It has been three months now since their house call for the queen of this kingdom in both Pharma and his father has devised a routine to compare their Kama Sutra notes every morning and figure out whether they want to try out anything new. He is surprised at the knowledge of different positions that Pharma has and can only comprehend it as a blessing from the gods. His father also tells him that he was recently approached by people from a medical college who wanted us to reveal the way to create these drugs, but Pharma immediately refuses, saying that as of now, only he can create the blue meth. His father tells him that he doesn't need to worry, as he told the medical college people that they can never create the drugs, and he wants to monopolize the market by selling these drugs and being the sole producer. Pharma looks at his dad and tells him that his actual intentions are to release the recipe of this drug to the public so that the cure of AIDS can be made at every pharmaceutical shop, but the problem is that he is using his special abilities to create these drugs. His father gets serious, however, and tells him that now he is in the eyes of a lot of people, not only from the pharmaceutical sector, but also from the sex that hate the queen, and should be very careful moving forward. He tells Pharma that he suspects someone intentionally facilitated the outbreak of AIDS inside of the royal palace, meaning that the queen got freaky with an enemy, which is very harem. Pharma, however, tells him that AIDS doesn't have any outright symptoms in the beginning, and whoever gave her the disease most probably doesn't know that he has it himself. His father is surprised at this piece of trivia, and asks him whether the god himself gave him a lecture about AIDS, but Pharma just replies that he uses the knowledge from the Kama Sutra in practice unlike his loser dad, before piecing out, saying that he's going to clap the queen's cheeks, and he will be back later. He visits the palace, and while waiting outside the door of the queen's chambers, he is approached by a young guy who is the attendant of queen's failed abortion, and he asks Pharma whether there is anything that he would want from the queen. Pharma seems to be confused, but the guy tells him that he ended up curing the queen's illness, so obviously she's going to give him a reward, but Pharma says that he hasn't though about anything. And if they talk about his passion, then he would only want to open a pharmacy and sells as much crack as he wants to people. The door opens, and he enters inside the room to do his regular checkup on the queen. He notes down any new symptoms and alters her dosage before telling her that her recovery seems to be going good, and in a couple months' time, she should be perfectly fine. The queen laughs and tells him that she can't wait to get freaky again. But Pharma clamjums her by saying that she needs to abstain for at least a couple of months or else the disease might end up recovering from its final stage. The queen seems to be taken aback by this piece of information, but promises that she will try to control herself as much as possible. The queen starts telling him that ever since she got inflicted with AIDS, her social status has plummeted massively, and no one respects her anymore. Pharma says that's what you get for being an easy ride but then consoles her by saying that no matter what someone else says, she will always be needed by her son, who will always respect her. That's the biggest lie I have ever heard. He also says that a lot of simps also adore her, and will keep worshipping her till the day she dies. This makes the attention-seeking wench very happy, and she dismisses Pharma for the time being, to flick her bean in peace. The next day, both he and his father are called to the royal court, and they both are totally pimped out. They enter the court to see it filled with a huge crowd of nobles, while the queen sits on her throne. She calls Pharma's father in front of her and starts talking a bunch of nonsense, thanking him for helping her in the state of distress, and then calls Pharma out from the crowd, who seems to be very surprised. He walks out to the queen timidly, and she puts her staff on his shoulders and praises him for his excellent service and for saving her life, before giving him a badge and making him the royal pharmacist, just like his father. She then tells him that she is giving him her personal permission to open a pharmacy in the royal city, wherever he wants, and whenever he wants on a land of his choosing, delighting him with this news. The next day, a bunch of people arrive in his house asking an audience, and when he meets up with them, they explain that they are the royal carpenters, builders, and masons, who the queen has personally allotted to make sure the pharmacy is constructed as quickly as possible, and as beautifully as possible. Pharma responds by saying that he doesn't really have any particulars of how, 
when and where he wants his pharmacy, and would need some time to decide, but the workers explain that they can't allow that, as if they return back to the palace without making the pharmacy, the queen will have their heads on a spike. Before he can even say anything, Ellen enters the room with her juicy personality, and tells him that his dad ordered her to assist him in creating the pharmacy. Pharma replies that he wants to wander around, and see some other pharmacies to get an idea of what he wants, and what is needed, but the workers immediately tell him that they can't let that happen, as the queen will literally make sure their entire family never sees the sunlight again. After thinking for a while, Pharma finally decides on what he wants and grabs a pencil and a sheet before beginning to draw an incredibly precise layout of the pharmacy of his dreams. Some time passes and the construction is going on pretty well, and now the contractor asks him whether he would want to name his pharmacy now. He thinks about it for a while before landing on the name Parallel World Pharmacy. He walks up to Ellen and asks him whether the name would be too flashy as he wants it to be a very quiet affair and doesn't want any unwanted press. But she replies that the son of a noble aristocrat opening a medical shop is groundbreaking news, and obviously is going to get press whether he wants it or not. Before they can talk further, however, a fatty rolls over to them, claiming that he thought this was just a rumor, as he looks at their shop. He looks at Pharma and tells him to bring out the owner of the shop, and Pharma tells him that he owns his mom every night before claiming to be the owner of the shop. Fatty claims that he is from a medicinal guild and asks him whether he wants to sell lollipops for kids or hard candies because obviously he is not old enough to do anything else. Pharma replies by saying that Fatty's mom likes his lollipop quite a lot and she is her only customer. For others, he is going to sell actual pharmaceutical drugs. He asks Fatty whether he has to register at his guild to operate his shop, but the fat blob replies that their guild doesn't take in registrations from any nobles, but if he would beg him for the chance then he might let him join. Pharma, however, rejects his offer, saying that he wants to work on his own and believes that he can do a better job than Fatty's entire guild by selling better medicine at cheaper rates. This enrages Fatty, who tells him that it is impossible for him to do so, but Ellen puts a stop to this by telling Fatty to back off before she loses her mind and makes a pot roast out of him, which scares Fatty so much that he simply runs away. Pharma goes inside of his shop and does some final inspections of the tools that he has and tells Elon that they will need someone to do accounts and deal with the money, at which point Lot tells him to consider her, as she can read, write, and likes to do math. What a monster! Pharma, however, doesn't want to give her a chance, as he is a total misogynist and tells her that he will make her his errand girl because obviously as a girl she can't handle stuff like money, which is totally out of her brain power. The simple-minded Lot quickly agrees and walks away. He then turns to Ellen once again and tells her that they will have to find someone reliable who can handle their accounts with perfection. That evening, he returns back to his mansion and finds all the servants, his sister, and Lot in the hallway shedding tears that confuses him. He walks in and asks what's the matter, to which a person named Cedric responds, thanking him for his generosity all these years and explaining that he is retiring as the Pharma family accountant from today onwards and will probably live his life in peace around some farms, and that's what got all these people emotional. He claims that he has gotten really bad means, and taking that in consideration, Pharma's dad has decided to dismiss him. Pharma asks him whether he would still want to work, if he had better knees, and Severt nods his head, saying that he loves managing accounts. After hearing that, he runs away and goes inside of his father's chambers, asking him for the permission to employ Cedric as the accountant for his pharmacy. His father tells him that he dismissed Cedric so that Pharma can hire him, and tells one of his servants to bring a giant chest that he gives Pharma as a gift for opening his shop. Pharma opens the chest and is shocked to see it filled with gold coins. I hate these trust fund kids. He tells Pharma to use this money carefully, and make sure to take his pharmacy to new heights, which is not very hard when you have unlimited money to be honest. It has been one month since the pharmacy has opened, but surprisingly enough he rarely gets one customer in a couple of weeks, and the business has been garbage, which has started making Pharma lose confidence in himself. Ellen, however, reassures him that this was bound to happen, as the commoners usually go to the pharmacists and medics that are of common origin, and that they have been going to from a long time whereas the nobles and the aristocrats simply gets the pharmacist to make a house visit to get rid of any illness. He takes a big sigh as he has no idea why would people not try the new pharmacy once at least, but just then, Lot enters the room with a bunch of papers in her hand and claims that she went over the entire town and conducted a survey on common people about their perception of the new pharmacy and she finally has the results. She starts listing the problems that people listed, with the first one being that there is an imperial seal on the door, which means that this pharmacy is answerable to no one but the queen, which is generally reserved for extremely high-ranking nobles. 
The second one being the presence of scary-looking guards posted outside the pharmacy that are important to protect the storefront, but scare commoners away because of their chilly attitudes. What do these people want? Teletubbies to guard the store? The next problem is that they don't know what to wear inside such a fancy store, which is the most middle-class thing that I have heard in a while. The next one being that they are scared of using the wrong etiquettes in front of a noble. The next problem being that people just assume that the prices for the medicine are going to be really high, even though they are cheaper than the competition. And the final problem being that they don't trust a child owner, which is very fair to be honest. They decide to brainstorm about these problems later, and thankfully this day one customer arrives who turns out to be an old sailor who wants some pills to reduce nausea. He gets the pills, drinks some water, and starts leaving, promising to be a returning customer. When Pharma stops him and gives him some vitamin C pills, claiming that sailors are very prone to gonorrhea, and this pill will help them defend against this problem. The old man, however, seems to be taken aback and refuses the pill, before making the excuse that someone is waiting outside for him. Pharma ends up following him and finds out that the old man is talking in a very hushed-up voice to two other suited-up men, but before he can investigate further, he is intercepted by his mom and dad, who are wearing a mask, which I have seen very often on a certain website. He takes them both inside of the shop and tells them to keep their fetishes inside of their bed chambers, but his dad simply tells him to shut up and asks him to give them the tour of the shop. Pharma takes them to the different floors of the shop, first showing the main floor area where he is going to sell his medicine. The second area is the room for patients to rest and even has isolation cells for deranged people like me. After that, he shows them the bathroom and the kitchen before taking them to his personal lab, where he develops new methods to create crack. After the tour is over, they sit down on the couch and he explains how the customer traffic is pretty low and the mother suggests him to start creating skincare cosmetics and sell it to the nobles and the aristocrats, which will boost his popularity amongst both nobles and the commoners. He thanks his mother because that is genuinely the best idea she has had so far, but his father becomes the buzzkill and tells him not to produce the white powder. Pharma seems to be confused, but his father reveals that he has noticed that women who use this white powder on their skin to make themselves look fairer end up contracting more diseases than those who don't consume this powder. Apart from that, the life expectancy also seems to get reduced if one uses this powder. He suddenly realizes that his dad is talking about the heavy metals that used to be present in the beauty products earlier, but are banned in the modern world. He promises his dad that he will make better products, but before he can talk more, a young man enters the room looking really terrified as he asks Pharma if he is the pharmacist over here, as her mistress has collapsed inside of the carriage. Pharma immediately runs off behind him and reaches the carriage to find a young noblewoman looking very weak and pale. He immediately uses his pervy eye to find out what's the problem with her, only to find out that her body seems to be fine apart from some cut marks on her hand. Suddenly, he realizes that this girl must have been following the medical procedure of bloodletting, which is done to try and gain a paler and fairer look. He immediately takes her back to his pharmacy and gives her some medicine for anemia. She gains some strength and reveals that she started doing this because her crush ended up rejecting her for a fairer-looking girl. What a racist bigot. After getting rejected, she followed the path of an imbecile by trying ways to get back instead of going to the gym and becoming a mass monster. He tells her that she shouldn't be doing such things as even when performed by doctors, this is very dangerous and tells her to come back next week as he will have some new cosmetic products for her. After a week, she returns and he provides her with a new heavy metal free powder and foundation that he created, which she immediately loves. This alongside the advertisement done by Lot ended up gaining the attention of a lot of customers who started visiting the shop to buy different products, realizing that the prices are cheap as well. After a while, the girl comes back again with a bunch of her friends, but by this time, all of the cosmetics have already been sold out, which is a big bummer. They both sit inside of a room, and she proposes to invest in his venture and open a subsidiary of his firm, which will only deal in cosmetics. He agrees to that, as his accountant gives him a green signal. After a while, another shop has been created alongside a lab, where the cosmetics are tested and created. The woman even got a bunch of trustworthy female pharmacists, who specialize in cosmetics, who would be working under pharma and increasing the supply of these products. The word of this new fairness powder reached the ears of the queen as well, who calls pharma, asking about his business, and he gives her some lip gloss, which is a new thing here. She applies it on her lips and is immediately enamored by how beautiful it makes her lips look, but pharma tells him to tread carefully as she doesn't want to get too freaky and get some disease again. She tells him that from now on, she wants to be the first person to get these cosmetics, and also tells him to increase the prices of his products, otherwise the local businessman will be crushed, which he agrees to do. 
Some time has passed and Pharma accompanies his dad to a voyage across the sea to meet with a lord named Adam, who once treated the queen and received lordship in return and as of now has the largest port and medicinal produce in the entire kingdom, making him extremely wealthy. While talking to his father, Adam mentions that they are having trouble dealing with one of the companies who keeps trying to find ways to avoid getting taxed. His father calmly looks at him and claims that they should try to talk things out as much as possible and sets up a meeting with him to deal with this problem while it's in its beginning stage. Suddenly, he turns towards Pharma and tells him that he should go out and play rather than engage in useless adult conversations. Pharma realizes that he needs to behave more like a kid and starts yapping like an idiot, saying that he will swim in the sea before running away. He goes down towards the beach when he spots Lot and his younger sister making sandcastles. Both the girls greet him and then his sister starts asking him to let her go play in the water, but he tells her that she doesn't know how to swim and neither does Lot, but Bland immediately grabs his arm and starts begging him to let her play in the water while Lot does the same. He is put in a very tough spot while the two girls both beg him to let them play in the water and promise that they will stay by the edge at all times. He finally agrees to let them dip their toes in water but tells them not to let themselves get wet. He turns around to see that Ellen has appeared out of nowhere like a diglet and is drinking wine before she tells him that she will also take a dip and even invites Pharma to help her get wet. Pharma politely declines the invitation which makes Ellen ask whether he doesn't know how to swim before she heads off into the ocean. He sits down and remembers that he used to be a really good swimmer in previous life and gets a flashback about how his sister used to beg him to let her play with him in the water, but because she was too young. He always told her that she can't go into water right now, but promised her that he will take her into the ocean and play with her once she becomes five years old, but that time never came as tragedy struck and she was taken away from this world, even before she turned five and ever had the chance to enjoy the beautiful ocean waves. He returns back to reality and quickly wipes away his tears, but was still broading when he hears a loud voice and looks up to see that Bland is flowing away at water while Lot screams for help like a total loser. Bland is unable to swim towards the shore and Pharma immediately runs towards the ocean before jumping in while Ellen tells him to stop as he can get in danger as well, but he doesn't care and follows Bland while Ellen is unable to keep up with the wild current. He keeps swimming only to realize that there's a huge wave against her which pulls her below the water so he quickly dives in as well, swimming towards his unconscious sister while remembering her real sister before vowing that she won't let Bland get hurt. He realizes that he can't reach her in time and shouts out in desperation which suddenly activates his gang sign tattoo and a huge light is emitted before the water in the entire area vanishes into thin air, leaving Bland on the seafloor, while Farmo looks in astonishment as fishes dance around to find water. Ellen gets up confused and looks around to find Farmer doing his best impression of Moses as he keeps the column of water from falling on top of them while holding Bland in one arm. He manages to get them out of that situation and on the beach Bland cries in his arms out of fear while Ellen sits there in complete shock. Pharma consoles Bland and checks whether she took any damage but is relieved to find her safe. Ellen, on the other hand, is unable to comprehend what just happened and asks what he does. Pharma honestly replies that he has no idea what just happened and it might have been one of his water magic abilities, but Ellen replies that no such magic exists. Pharma is shocked to hear that and notices that even Lot seems to be scared of him right now, but he is just happy that he was able to save his sister from imminent death in this life at least and hugs her tightly. Later that night, he sits on his bed and broods about how he simply removed all the water from the surrounding area, not even thinking about how their body is also made of water and a small slip-up could have taken their lives. Lot puts him to bed and starts heading out of the room, but Pharma stops her and apologizes before telling her that she need not worry as he won't use that magic again. Lot seems to be confused when Pharma remarks that he knows she was scared when he used that magic, but she immediately tells him that she wasn't scared of him. On the contrary, she was in awe of his magical prowess and was immensely impressed by his quick thinking and decision-making that saved Bland's life. She cries about the fact that while Bland was drowning, she was unable to move an inch and just stood there frozen. Pharma tells her that she made the right choice by not going in as she doesn't know how to swim either and tells her that she is just as important to him as his sister. Lot couldn't contain her happiness and thanks him from the bottom of her heart before going out to her room for the night. The next morning, they open their shop to a horde of people that had gathered in the front. Pharma is shocked to see so many people as they don't have half as many customers on a normal day. He thinks that it might be because they were closed for the weekend thanks to their beach trip, but Ellen claims that it is just because Pharma's medicine is excellent. While looking around, Pharma notices a pair of white-robed men eyeing him down like he's a fucking tart. He walks up to them and asks whether he could help them, but they had no interest in replying and immediately walked away. Later that day, they sit down for some tea, 
and Pharma starts talking about the guys in the white robe and Ellen claims that even she tried to help but they only seem to have an eye for Pharma and Lot tells him that she asked whether she could help them find something but they didn't even reply. Ellen tells Pharma that their robes didn't look like those from around this region as she knows all of the guilds in their area, which makes it even more suspicious as to what their goal was. Lot gets slightly scared and asks whether they should contact the guards and Pharma agrees. The next morning while the guards were unlocking the doors of the pharmacy they witnessed a horse carriage running towards them. He tries to stop the horse but it simply thrashes through the front gate destroying everything. After that, the guard comes to Pharma's mansion where he explains the happenings to his father who is outraged by this. He asks the guard what the hell was he doing but the guard simply apologizes claiming that he didn't even have time to react. Pharma realizes that this is a really daring move by the enemy, while his father claims that he will punish the perpetrator himself. His advisor asks why would someone commit such an act, and his dad replies that the enemies want to shut down Pharma's shop as they see him as an outsider selling mind-blowing medicine at really cheap prices. He tells the guard to be ready as he expects more problem, while he tells them that he will write to the queen himself about this matter. Pharma tells his father that he will leave to check up on the pharmacy as well, but his dad stops him and asks whether he has any suspects in mind. He knows that this could be the work of the pharmacy guild as well as the white cloak people, but to be sure, he tells him that he needs time to gather more information. Pharma runs to the pharmacy only to find it completely destroyed as men try to get rid of the rubble and debris. Pharma asks about the situation and one of his employees shows him how the shop is completely destroyed. Before Pharma could go inside, the man quickly uses purification magic to remove the smell. Pharma checks the shop and finds out that the medicine room was unharmed which means he can make more stuff if he wants to while the man tells him that Ellen and Lot had both taken as much medicine as they can to the mansion so that the people who require them urgently can get it. While Pharma comes out of the shop, he finds Gene, the old guy that he once helped with a bunch of young strong men and tells Pharma that he is here to help. All the rest of the local folks seem to love Pharma and tell him how sad they are for him, but claim that they will help him resettle the shop. They all start cleaning the place up while Pharma watches in awe when suddenly a woman runs up inside and starts asking for a doctor. Pharma immediately walks up to her and she starts crying explaining that her father has suddenly fallen to the ground because of heat and is not getting up. He immediately gets on a horse with the girl and starts riding as she gives him direction to her sick father. He keeps riding while thinking about all the possible reasons for her father's sickness and worrying about whether he bought enough meds when the girl tells him to move past the hill. This kind of raises some red flags for him as he doesn't know why her father would be in such a remote location. They walk through the grasslands but when he turns around to ask her a question, she vanishes from the area and instead he gets surrounded by a bunch of white hooded men on horses. One man raises a wand towards him and asks him to answer honestly whether he was the one who deleted a part of the ocean near the beach. Pharma stands there shocked while the man claims that he is an investigator from the royal kingdom and demands an answer. He suddenly gets a flashback where Ellen teaches him about the temple, which is the holy organization of this world. According to her, the temple presides with the highest amount of power, as they are the ones who give the nobles their status of nobility by gauging their magical strength. She tells him that the temple is almost as powerful as the queen herself, and in their eyes archdukes and other nobles are nothing. After that, she elaborated upon the investigators of the temple who are known to be ruthless when they find a heretic or someone who doesn't believe in their cause. They are known to delete the person from existence using their extraordinary magic abilities. He snaps back to reality where the leader of the group introduces himself as Sal and directly asks him why he doesn't have a shadow. Sal calls him stupid as he literally came out in the open and broad daylight when his shadow is not visible at all. He calls out Pharma and claims that he is not a human boy, but an evil spirit with no shadow. Pharma shouts that he is not an evil spirit or ghost, but one of the men interrupts and asks him what exactly he is. Pharma honestly replies that as far as he knows he is a human being but Sal is in no mood to hear anything and claims they don't need any justification. Sal tells him to keep his hands up and walk back 10 steps and because Pharma doesn't want to escalate the situation, he follows and backs off. After that, Sal immediately uses his magic to imprison him by using his magic dome. To their absolute surprise, the dome breaks completely which scares them and they start running around him, while one of them uses his flame magic to attack Pharma. He immediately uses a fire shield around him and after that he simply uses his magic to remove oxygen from the surrounding area, which stops the flames. The investigators think that Pharma has any fire magic so another guy uses an ice magic towards Pharma, but he immediately casts another shield which deletes the ice magic as well which literally blow their mind as they haven't seen anyone with multiple attributes who can also use wandless magic. 
The investigators lose their mind and Sal tells them to forget capturing him alive and simply go for the kill. This scares Pharma while the men simultaneously attack him with earth, wind, water, and fire magic. All the attacks bind together and blast Pharma while the investigators wait for the dust to settle only to watch him completely covered in an ice cage where he decides that enough is enough and is forced to use his offensive magic. He casts a massive flashbang which forces Sal off his course and while his crummies try to help him up, they notice that Pharma is walking towards them while levitating the iceberg that sunk Titanic on top of him. He tells them that he can easily get rid of them in one single attack, but he has been born in this world to heal people and not to harm. His glowing body shocks Saul to the core who finally spots the gang sign tattoo on his arms and tells his cronies that he has been mistaken and this boy is not a human, but the god of medicine himself. This shocks Pharma who tries to tell them that there is nothing like that, but they all bow down and Saul claims that he has received punishment for raising his wand against the god himself, and Pharma notices that while falling from his horse, Saul's leg got fractured and is bleeding. Saul starts melodrama and tells everyone that he will die of this wound soon and begs Pharma for forgiveness before taking down the small dagger from his ass and putting it on his throat. Thankfully, Pharma is able to stop the knife just before it hits Saul's throat and uses his magic to delete it as well. Saul looks confused while Pharma tells him that he doesn't want anyone to die and all he wants is to run his pharmacy in peace. He backs off and uses his vision to spot the open fracture in Saul's leg and tries to figure out the best way to stop the bleeding. He thinks about amputating the leg, but the spot turns glow, which means that he will die from amputation. He realizes that he will have to perform an operation to save his life, but the problem is that they are so far away from the town that it might get too late for him. He knows that he is a pharmacist who doesn't really perform operations, but if immediate medical attention isn't given to Sal, he will not survive. He immediately turns around and uses his earth magic to craft a magic table before telling his cronies to lay Sal on top and also tells them to call a carriage. Sal is shocked to see God himself willing to treat him, but Pharma tells him not to worry about it. By the time evening comes, he puts Sal inside of a tent and finally enters it explaining to Sal that he will have to give him some antibiotics before providing anesthesia for pain, and then he will clean the wound before cutting out the damaged tissues, and then stitch him up back again. He gets ready and puts on his surgical equipments before getting a syringe and administering anesthesia in his spine. After that, he creates a block of ice and kinkily asks Sal whether he can feel it. Sal replies that he can't feel anything which relieves Pharma who immediately gets his scalpel and gets down to work. After some hours, he comes out of the tent where Sal's cronies are waiting eagerly to hear the news. Pharma gives them the good news that the surgery was successful and their commander will live to see another day. All of them bow down in awe as they can't believe not only did Pharma not punish them, but he helped them instead. Pharma tells them to chill out a butt before ordering them to keep this incident a secret as he doesn't want his powers to be revealed to the general public. Several months later, Sal himself visits Pharma's pharmacy, which shocks Ellen and Lot as he is the temple's chief bishop and investigator, but he tells them that he owes Pharma his life and gives them a bunch of chocolates. He thanks Pharma again, saying that he is only able to walk because of him and will always be a loyal servant. He claims that he has completely erased the files about a suspicious boy who has no shadow, so he shouldn't need to worry about any further problems on that end as well. Pharma thanks him for his help and looks outside to see his entourage carrying a bunch of gifts for him, which he finds a bit too excessive. Sal asks Pharma for a talk in private and shows him a box which contains a special wand that is said to be the original wand of the god of medicine. It was kept inside the temple's treasury with the statue of the god, but Sal believed that the wand should be with his rightful master, so he brought it here. He claims that this wand can use all attributes alongside being ready for combat, diagnostics, and healing as well. Pharma is mind-blown while Ellen salivates at the sight of such a big and thick wand which can satisfy her. Pharma seems to be hesitant handling a national treasure as he is afraid it might break or get stolen. Sal tells him to simply pick the wand up and when he does so, the wand starts glowing brilliantly and both Sal and Ellen claim that the wand has recognized Pharma as its true owner. Ellen is salivating from all the holes in her body and asks whether she could hold his big, thick wand as well, and Pharma agrees only to find out that the wand simply slips between her fingers and falls to the floor. They turn towards Sal, who claims that this wand belongs to a god so no human can touch it or use it apart from its rightful owner. Pharma picks it up once again and tries to sit on it as per Sal's instruction, and to his surprise, it starts floating in the air alongside him. Finally, Sal departs with his men and tells Pharma that the temple will cause no more problems to him, but tells him to be wary as the temple didn't attack his pharmacy with that horse carriage last time, which means that someone else is after him as well. 
Pharma honestly replies that he has no idea who it could be but would like to find out soon and before parting away, Sal gives him one last gift, which looks like a locket and tells Pharma that this will suppress his godly power, and to his surprise, Pharma looks down to see his own shadow visible on the floor, which makes him immensely happy as he finally feels like a human. Later that day, he spends his time with his sister and Lot and takes them into the market to buy some fruit, but he seems to be tired after working so much as the customer base has exploded and he needs more employees. He thinks about the people he can hire who he trusts when he notices a young woman trying to find a particular medicine in a pharmacy who didn't have it. The owner of the shop tells the woman that even though the medicines sold by pharma are effective, the guild doesn't approve of them, which means that normal pharmacies don't have the required permissions to sell these drugs. Later that evening, Farm returns to the shop and tells Elin about her plans of establishing a new guild altogether. She checks the minimum requirements and claims that they can legally start the guild if they want and she believes that once the guild is ready, the new shops will definitely join in order to capitalize on the new meds which will effectively reduce their workload as well. It is swiftly decided that the guild will be created and Pharma tells Cedric to get ready with the paperwork. The next morning while walking to his pharmacy, he ends up finding a ragged-looking man holding his daughter on his back banging at the doors of a local doctor. Pharma tells him that the doctor is out of the city for a few days, but if he wants, Pharma can have a look at his daughter. The man looks at Pharma suspiciously and spots the badge of the royal pharmacist on his collar and tries to politely say no as he won't have enough money, but Pharma tells him not to worry as he will take care of everything before sending Lot ahead to set things up. He tells the man to follow and they pass by the front gate to his pharmacy which is completely loaded with people all the way to the back gate. They enter into a clean room and he tells the man to lay his daughter down on the stretcher while he puts on a mask and gives one to the man who seems to be confused on its usage. Pharma assures him that it is safe and tells him it is there to stop the spread of infection, and the man realizes that they came from the back gate so that his sister's disease doesn't spread. Pharma sits down on the table and starts asking questions about the girl and the man tells him that his daughter's name is Marie and she is seven years old. Next Pharma asks when did she fall ill, and the man claims that she ate for the last time last day in the afternoon and ever since she is sick. Pharma tells him that the girl seems to be dehydrated and is barely conscious as of now which means the fever is high. He then asks the man whether she knew Marie's weight but he doesn't so Pharma makes him stand on a weighing scale while holding Marie. He notes down the weight while the man looks at him confusingly, so Pharma tells him that he will now weigh him separately, which will give him the weight of Marie alone that way he can assign the correct dosage. Later Pharma checks for any other physical signs on her body and mouth before using his special magic eye to check for problems which are noticed by the man, and he immediately asks whether it is the divine magic arts to which Pharma replies that it is. After the complete checkup, he turns towards the dad and informs him that Marie has a severe case of cold, which totally shocks the man as he expected something much more deadly. He asks Pharma whether he is sure it wasn't because of possession by spirits, but Pharma shakes her head. The man says that he doesn't know any cold that results in such high fever and even convulsions but Pharma replies that this is a particular case of cold called influenza. The man has no idea about it but Pharma tells him that it happens because of a virus before reassuring him that everything will be okay. He gets up and takes out a pouch and tells the man to make his daughter smort the powder twice a day. The man scared asks him what the powder is and Pharma replies Cocaino. He then tells the girl that he will teach her how to snort it soon before telling his father that the fever is due to the white blood cells in Marie's body fighting against the virus, and essentially it's a good thing as this virus dies in high temperature surroundings. He then puts Marie down on the bed and tells his dad not to worry as she will heal pretty quick and leaves the room, promising to check on her after some time. Later that night, Pharma releases the girl as she is strong enough to go back home and gives his dad some medicine before telling him that even though the shop is closed, he shouldn't be scared to approach the guards and tell them his problem. The man is surprised and asks whether he is willing to see her at night, also if something happens, and Pharma replies that he is, as this way he can help more people. The man then comes to the main point and asks how much does he owe Pharma and promises that even though he might not have that much money immediately, he will make sure to pay him slowly even with interest. Pharma tells him not to worry about anything as the fee is equal to a piece of bread, which shocks the man, but Pharma claims that this way the poor people wouldn't hesitate from getting their kids checked up even for minor problems. It turns out that the man is named Pierre and he himself is a pharmacist, but he didn't have the required medicine or knowledge to cure a disease which he had no idea about. He sits down and tries to learn as much as he can while his wife tells him that he has helped enough people and shouldn't worry. 
The man turns to her with tears in his eyes and claims that if she or their daughter were to fall ill, he wouldn't be able to save them as he doesn't have as deep of a knowledge as Pharma, and above that he doesn't have any magic. His wife tells him never to speak about their daughter's treatment to anyone as it will result in his expulsion from the medical guild and his shop would effectively be closed, but Pierre tells her that he will make a choice which he thinks is necessary. The next day, Pierre and all the other guild members are called for another meeting in which the fatty guild leader talks about how much loss they are suffering because of the parallel world pharmacy and claims that his wife bought some cosmetics from them without knowing, so he smashed all of them to bits. Everyone else also complains about how their sales have been decreased, when finally Pierre's chance to speak comes and he gets up before frankly telling everyone that they can never compete with Pharma, as he is leaves above them in terms of knowledge and the amount of care he displays for each and every person no matter what their social standing is. He tells them about his daughter and her treatment which shocks everyone and they start calling him traitor. Fatty tells him that if they don't find a way to destroy Pharma's social standing soon they will have to shut shops and he will not let that happen. Pierre retorts by saying that they need to learn from him and then use similar methods and medicine in their own practices, because they are simply using herbs that they don't even know work or not, while the other men claim that the herbs were used by their forefathers also, so it must work. The men are outraged and they kick him out of the guild and by the time evening comes, his entire shop is destroyed and his license snatched away. He sits on the steps crying when Pharma happens to see him and figures out that Pierre is a pharmacist as well. Pierre tells him everything that happened and claims that now he is completely destroyed, he will have to move to a new country and start from scratch with a new guild. Pharma looks up to him and lends a helping hand by saying that he is starting a guild of his own and just received the permissions from the Majesty before asking Pierre to be his first guild member. Pierre can't control his tears and shakes his hand, forever indebted to Pharma for saving his lives. Some time passes by and Pierre rebuilds his store completely and gets ready for the inauguration. He seems to be nervous, but his daughter gives him strength, and he opens the door to see one hundreds of customers waiting already. Some months have passed when one day while on the breakfast table, his father receives a letter from his older brother Pal who is supposed to come back home for vacations. His father informs everyone that Paul is not coming back for a while because of some issues and calls Pharma into his office. After closing the doors, he tells Pharma that there has been a problematic development near his college. He explains that a new disease has erupted and is becoming an epidemic, as it has already wiped out a sizable chunk of population there. Pharma gets shocked by the number of people already dead, as his dad explains that Powell's college researchers tried to isolate some specimens and conduct research on them, but two of the researchers died within a week due to necrosis after getting into contact, which means that it is highly contagious. Pharma asks whether they can get a specimen so he can also check it, but his father claims that all the remains of any specimen or dead body with that disease has been burned with holy flames. Moreover, the island where the disease erupted has been quarantined and the laboratory has been shut down and barred completely. Pharma is shocked to hear about necrosis and asks about any other information that he has and his father reveals that before they burn everything, some students used the microscope designed by Pharma and made some sketches of the pathogen. Pharma immediately tells his dad to ask Pal for the sketches and the next day, he goes down to his shop extremely worried. Ellen notices it and asks whether he is okay but he replies that there is a big problem. He explains to her about the disease that has been spreading and tells her that within two weeks a huge fair is going to happen in the capital and the cargo is coming from the area which is already infected. Before they can discuss further, Lot arrives with a small scroll claiming it to be from Pal, and Pharma immediately opens it and realizes that this is plague, one of the most difficult to cure diseases that existed on Earth. Later that day, he meets up with his father and tells him that the disease that they are fighting is called Black Death or the Bubonic Plague. His father tells him that the last event of any such disease happened 210 years ago in this world, and it drastically reduced the population while Pharma remembers that plague happened on Earth in the 1500s as well, and it killed nearly half of Earth's population because it is highly contagious, as it is transferred by the fleas present on rats, and alongside that the mortality rate is extremely high as well. His father claims that they need to intercept the cargo and Pharma reveals that he has already sent instructions for the preparation of quarantine areas. Pharma claims that he has already figured out a way to create a medicine, but only he can create it because it needs divine arts. His father tells them that the only thing they can do now is get the queen involved for more help so they leave for the palace. After meeting and explaining everything to the queen, she quickly grasps the situation and claims that she will close the city gates and minimize the trade, while she also grants him permission to create inspection stations for the cargo. Some days later, the inspection stations are set up and Pharma meets up with Pierre and gives him a newly designed compound microscope which is leads above the previous simple one he created. 
He warns him about the disease and gives him stocks of medicine before leaving the tent. The next morning, both Pharma and Ellen depart from the city in order to analyze the extent of this problem. And while Pharma is scared about dealing with one of the scariest diseases in existence, Ellen reassures him that he will be fine. They travel back to Adam's city, near the beach, where he deleted the ocean, and they meet up with the two underlings they sent prior. The underlings tell him that the city seems to be fine for now and inspection stations are put everywhere so that not a single infected individual can remain unrecognized. Pharma thanks for their cooperation and then moves on to a small rowboat to make their way towards the fleet of ship carrying the cargo from the infected island. The ships are not allowed to dock for some days now and the captains and their crewmates seem to be pretty pissed about that. Pharma enters the first ship where the captain asks how much time will it take for them to finally land on shore but Pharma pleads with them to cooperate while he finds the physician of the ship and asks him for the required documents and health certificates. After making sure that the documents are fine, he finally descends below the deck and starts inspecting each and every crewmate for any sign of the plague and then proceeds to check the cargo on board. Finally, he comes to the conclusion that the ship is not contaminated and gives it the green signal to dock. After that, he gets on the boat again to move towards the next ship when the captain of a different ship starts throwing tomatoes at them. He seems to be pissed that he has to wait on the boat for so many days, while another captain starts bickering with him about how he needs to be inspected first as he has cargo that can go bad. They both argue with each other while Farman doesn't know what to do when suddenly canon fire is sounded, which scare every single one of them. But when Farmer turns around, he notices a fleet of royal ship from the capital city, which is being captained by Jean the old man who comes to his shop for God knows what reason. He shouts at the other ships to maintain decorum if they don't want to become titanic, and they all get scared straight into following orders. Farmer gets on up Jean's ship and meets with him, thanking him for his help before and then tells him to stay here and keep an eye on the ship so that no one tries to dock illegally. After that, he goes back to the inspection tents and talks with the other volunteers there and they all claim that till now there has been zero cases of anyone being infected here which gives them some confidence, but it is short-lived as Adam. The acting mayor of the region arrives inside the camp with a hood on and claims that a village near the edge of his region has reported deaths recently, which seem to have been caused after some sailors illegally docked and tried to move their goods yesterday. Pharma is pale with fear as he realizes that it must be the plague and if left alone, it can become a very big problem. According to Adam, it started with a fever first, but then the first person died and after that the disease exploded in number, taking lives of several people. Pharma immediately starts walking out while Ellen advised him not to go alone. She tells him that he is the one who is inspecting the other ships but Pharma replies that Ellen can also check the ships as he needs to solve the issue in the village on a priority before anything bad happens. He gets on his magic wand and Harry Potter's away and while in air, he hits disbalance and almost crashes into a tree, but to his surprise, the wand simply goes through it, without causing any damage. He finally descends down near the village, only to find it in chaos as everyone is planning to move out of the area because they believe their village is possessed by spirits. He tells them to go back immediately and not to leave the village, but the villagers are distrusting and take up arms against him, forcing him to showcase his magic as he covers the entire village into an igloo. He shows the villagers his badge and claims that he can cure the disease, but for that they need to go back inside. They all seem to get hope after seeing their royal pharmacist is here and start complying. He makes his temporary headquarters inside an old house and gathers the village leaders before showing them the plan. He wants to segregate the village into three zones, one for people with heavy infection, one for light infection, and one for uninfected people. He reassures them that the people with the highest infection will be treated on priority, and this way, they will prevent its spread as well. They all agree to cooperate with him and the operation begins. By the next day, Pharma starts his work and visits one of the temporary hospitals where a bunch of patients have been laid down. He quickly checks all of them for signs of disease and finds out that some of them are infected, some are dead. While some are just showing the early signs, he quickly tells the rest of the volunteers to start administering the medicine that he brought, which while he personally goes to the most infected people and starts using his divine magic to boost the effect of his medicine, which leads to the patient becoming well in no time. Back in the royal capital, his father gets his letter describing a way to create a vaccine for this disease and he calls one of the oldest professors called Casper, who specializes in vaccines but was never given the opportunity to shine. This time his father shows her the letter that Pharma sent and asks her to find out a way to create a vaccine like this. To his absolute surprise, the old woman takes one look at the letter and claims that she has already successfully created something like this three years ago. His father immediately follows her back to her lab and is shocked to his core after witnessing the vaccine already present in several vials. 
He immediately calls all the people and tell them to maximize the production of this vaccine and stop any other research that is being pursued. By the time May falls, Pharma emerges from the village to meet with the village leaders and informs that he tried to treat as many infected people as possible, and most of them are on a track of healthy recovery but there were also a lot of people who he was unable to save. He claims that they have avoided the worst-case scenario but they can't relax just yet. He tells the leaders to make sure no one leaves the village for at least two weeks, and if they ever see a rodent or a flea kill them immediately, no matter what the activists say. He immediately leaves the area on his magic wand and flies around completely tired when he spots a smoke rising from the edge of the forest. He quickly descends down to find his volunteers surrounding a bunch of tied-up sailors while they burn all the cargo. They tell them that these were the sailors who illegally landed on land and because they got too sick, their captain left them here. The sailors seem to be scared for their life, but Pharma promises that if they reveal information, he will treat them. The sailors immediately tell him that they were carrying a bunch of cargo, but one particular cargo had white flying squirrels from an island which was carried by holy knights themselves. Pharma immediately realizes that this is all just a plan to kill the queen. He understands now that even the disease that she got earlier was intentionally set upon her to take her life, but when Pharma treated it, the person got pissed and decided to use the most deadly disease known on this planet to kill everyone including the queen. The next day, inside of the royal capital, the gates are breached by a bunch of armored knights that start creating a ruckus, and while doing that one of the knights releases a bunch of squirrels inside the city. The news travels to the queen pretty quickly which confuses her as she thinks they are being attacked by an enemy kingdom, but the scout replies that it's only five knights. Suddenly, Pharma's father realizes what's up and tells the queen his suspicions about the disease being created by a man he knew. According to him, he used to have a classmate named Cal who was just as brilliant as him, but he had a lot of differences in principle compared to him. One night, he wandered around the dungeon and saw his classmate performing human experiments, and he realized that Cal had zero humanity. He immediately told the superiors who had Cal expelled and he was later cast aside from the medicine community by the investigators of the temple. He tells the queen that before being expelled, he was researching a special type of poison which can jump from one person to another person, which in another way simply means that he was trying to create an epidemic virus which can take lives of people without even any kind of physical altercation. Back inside the city, the brawl is on full display as the knights are spreading the squirrels all over while fighting against the royal forces. The royal forces are of no match against the holy knights and are getting trampled, when suddenly Saul shows up with his gang and immediately stops the knights on their tracks. Meanwhile, Pharma finally arrives back inside of the city and stands on the bell tower only to find out that the infection has already started to spread. He suddenly notices some small dots and finds out the flying squirrel is still on move, spreading the disease everywhere. He suddenly spots his dad and descends down to meet him after which they both walk towards the main gate where Sal has apprehended the injured and diseased knights. He questions them about their intentions and the knights claim that they were forced to do it because a crazy person has taken over their island and has threatened to kill all of his population if the knights didn't follow his orders. Pharma's dad asks if the person is called Cal and they immediately agree but before they can reveal anything else, they succumb to the disease and die on the spot. Pharma's dad orders to burn them and while they are being taken care of, Pharma feels a weird feeling and turns around to spot a guy on top of a building who is looking very dark and shadowy. Pharma immediately tells his father that he is going back to the pharmacy as he has an ominous feeling and meanwhile, Lot enters the pharmacy alongside Cedric to get some meds. They ascend up to the first floor where suddenly Lot turns around to see that a hooded guy has stabbed Cedric in the back. On the other hand, Pharma and his father both reach the pharmacy and he notices that the shadowy figure is inside the building. They immediately rush inside only to find both Lot and Cedric bleeding in a corner, while the dark figure looms beside them. Pharma's dad immediately attacks Cal who blocks the attacks before turning around to show his ghoulish face. Pharma immediately rushes to his friends and realizes that this is not just a common stab wound as the blood has been poisoned. While his dad fights against Cal, Pharma tries to figure out the poison and tries to delete it only to realize that there are multiple poison inside their body and gets down to cure them one by one. On the other side, his dad gets bested by his former friend who kicks him away before making his way towards Pharma and his friends. He tries to create another deadly poison but Pharma deletes the compound before punching him in the face with reinforced magic. They fall down the building and Pharma hits Cal with his wand, leaving him motionless before stabbing him in the chest, which results in his immediate death. Everyone rejoices and after a while they are able to control the spread of the Black Death as well and slowly but surely things return to normal as the Queen declares the epidemic to have ended. 
Pharma goes back to his store and starts living his usual life, eagerly waiting for the new challenges on the horizon. Watch this next video on the screen. See you next time.